Kenyans in the diaspora, and especially those ones from Minneapolis, Minnesota, congregated in one of Kenya's finest hotels, Hotel Jumbo Africa. They braved the chilly weather. You can see the snow, but most of them came and had one word for the Honorable Prime Minister Raila Amolodinga, telling him, Pole, not only Raila Amolodinga, but even his family, Mama Aida, Kenyans at large, and they basically told him that they are with him. And most of them were really perturbed or were seriously having very many questions to be answered. But they are still waiting for answers. Why or what killed Fidel Raila Odinga? Reporting for KDR TV, Minneapolis, Minnesota, is KB Omweri. Thank you. Yeah, I just wanted to join the rest of us uh, in sending our heartfelt condolences to the family of Ray Lodinga following the loss of uh, uh, Fidel. Uh, we know the pain of losing a son uh, is, is quite much. And uh, uh, so first and foremost, we want to thank God for having given us the Raila family and for what they have done for Kenya and equally well uh, for Fidel and but we also know that the untimely death of Fidel is is actually painful to the family as well as a big loss to the country to Kenya as a whole um, but we also want to um, say that uh, while we have plans in this world God plans but we don't know as yet whether this was a foul play or it was a natural death. Uh, but whatever it is, it's a, it's, a, it's a painful process. And on behalf of myself, my family, and Kota, Minnesota, we want to extend our condolences to the family, to the whole country of Kenya, following the laws of a, a, a young man who had potential. Uh, we never know he would have even been the president, the next president of the country. So. It's a big loss, and, uh, and, and we feel for the family, and uh, we pray that God may comfort them and equally well um, uh, uh, provide comfort at this time of loss and pain. Thank you, and God bless you. Okay, uh, my name is Conrad Watima, and uh, I'm also a Kenyan. Um, and uh, I'm just going to add to what has been said. Uh, generally, uh, the death of Fidel actually for me reminds me of uh, the death of Garang, uh, the Sudanese leader. I mean, after he worked so hard for so many years, fought through the struggle, then just when everything was like, okay, now, we, I mean, it's smooth sailing, he just dies just like that. Yeah. And we still don't know exactly what happened. I mean, so this just reminds me of the same, same thing of us l losing somebody who had very, very serious leadership capabilities just when we needed them, you know. So this kind of reminds me of what our brother said, that sometimes God does things that make us w ask why, you know. This is just another one of those things that get you like, why should this happen? Why didn't he even die like 40 years ago? Why didn't he die when he was a kid? You know, that kind of thing. But uh, all we have to do is just uh, hold on and believe. And as he said, it could be a test. God has his own plan. And uh, Ours is just to keep believing and also pray that um, uh, God gives the Raila family wisdom and strength because you can imagine uh, we are feeling terrible yet he's not our son. Now you can imagine what they are feeling given the sacrifice they've gone through, I mean what they've lived through and then now when things look like they're going to be better for their children, now the son dies and it's like the cycle goes on, his son now is also going to follow that. But one good thing that I can say is that all is not lost because at least he left us behind a son. So uh, maybe God has a purpose for that little boy and uh, all we have to keep on praying and hoping that something good comes out of his life. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I didn't know Fidel, but I'm a huge fan of Raila Odinga. When I, <coughs> when I heard the news,
and I don't cry usually. But I, I felt for him as a, I mean, how much suffering could one person go through? He's done a lot for the country. And it's, a, it's just a very sad situation. Um, I was watching the funeral on YouTube. And, and I think every Kenyan feels sad because they put themselves in their, his situation. Um, I heard the father was sitting by his body for a few hours, not able to absorb the news. And I just, I thought that was just very tragic. So, you know, we're praying for him. We're wishing him well, strength um, for the mother, his wife, you know, his son. I guess my two words is that we still believe in the dream. You know, he will persevere and he'll come through. Kenya has uh, potential to do more. We can't forget his sacrifices, his years in jail. These freedoms we're enjoying, a lot of people have put blood into it. Um, I'm a great admirer of Raila Odinga and he will come through. Thanks. My name is Sheila Sitati. And this is my daughter, Michaela. And um, yeah, I just also want to um, express my heartfelt condolences to the Odinga family, uh, Raila Odinga and Ida Odinga. Just as many people have said, I'm one of um, Raila Odinga's supporters. I admire him and I appreciate, you know, w what he did for our country, um, for the sacrifices he made for us to enjoy and um, I just want to say um, when I receive the news I mean I usually stay up really late just following up Kenyan politics and reading the news and I think I read the first message at about I think between 11.30 and 12 midnight last week on Saturday around that time on Facebook and I was in shock immediately I started calling people in Kenya just to confirm if it's true and I called a few people here just to confirm if it's true. Then later is when I started seeing the messages streaming in and saying um, that Fidel is dead. And immediately, um, it was really, really, um, I mean, it's been a hard week. I didn't know F Fidel, but I felt the loss. Like, um, I knew him because I, I, I just tried to imagine the pain that the Odingas were going through, and especially for um, Honorable Raila Odinga. He must have been feeling guilty because... Um, just the circumstances under which he died, um, you can actually, I mean, I'm sure for him as a dad, he must have felt guilty because, you know, I mean, I don't want to say much, but then I just tried to imagine what must have been going through his mind at the time when he had the news. But then, you know, like, you know, after all is said and done, um, um, I think as Kenyans we just need to unite and just continue pushing forward um, with Fidel's agenda because you know f f from what we've read and from what we've seen he was a man of the people and and that is what we should do we should unite and build our country thank you my name is Henry Mumani uh, I don't think I can repeat what uh, other speakers have you know, said, especially the chairman of Wakea, because I've been following this uh, event closely. Actually, I had sleepless nights because I really wanted to know who, who Fidel is. I don't know Fidel by personally, but I've come to know Fidel since he died. And like he said, people have written about Fidel. But if I can summarize, uh, they say, you saw me your friends, I will, say, I will, I will tell you your character. Uh, Fidelis, even the time he was about to die, you can tell the way he was going around from point A, B, C, D, the friends he was meeting, you can tell, like he said, they were not rules, they were readers in their own world making. 
and uh, when we some of us we come and uh, start you know asking ourselves why was he going within a short time he met very prominent people businessmen women and uh, you can you can ask yourself the place these people meet you know that's where they say like you know that it was maybe you know at Nimlev, things like that. Yes, these big people they meet somewhere. You go where they are, you know. You, you don't you don't go to church to meet these people politicians. You see, so people can say whatever they want to say, but if you follow the way the guy moved from point A, B, C, D until he made his death, you can conclude yourself what type he what type what, what type of person he was. Number two, uh, I don't know. If you you are following the 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 papers very closely, so many people have come out to identify themselves with the Viteris. Some of them they had appointments which were yet to be what you know to be done to, with the Viteris, including the president of United uh, the president of the Republic of Kenya, the eulogies, you know. They have spoken forums. So what we can say, as my friend said, let us pour some leaf from there. Let us be Kenyans, you know, as readers, let us <coughs> go beyond the divide. Imambo Nasema, Nimujaruo, Kamavira, Nasema, Nimukisi, Nimusumari, that one is, is making our community go back. So I don't want to speak much because of the time. Once again, thank you for coming. You know, to condole the family, the Winger family, and uh, may God bless the family at this, you know, difficult time. Thank you. Like you knew Fidel, or irrespective of your political persuasions, the entire country is mourning. I mean, you could see what happened in uh, in, in Kisumu and uh, what happened in Nairobi. Uh, the president, the vice president, uh, the deputy president, so to speak, Honorable Kalonzo. Tangula, all the leaders in the country, the speaker, the country has come together. So um, in the same spirit, we in the diaspora want to convey our sin sincere condolences uh, to the uh, Odinga family, but also to the larger extended Kenyan family. Uh, I want to say a couple of quick things. One is I I've, I've come to know Fidel, I've met him a couple of times. Um, uh, his mom, who is actually, uh, we called her Mama Fidel. We call, I generally call Ida Mama Fidel. And uh, we want to really sincerely convey our heartfelt uh, condolences to that family. Um, I have spoken to Mama Ida about Fidel a number of times in Washington, D.C. Uh, in my brief encounters with Fidel, I've seen, known him to be a very gentle man. And it's interesting, because that's the storyline that everyone speaks about, is about his humility. I listened to Lillian, who I didn't even know went to school with him. Uh, the common theme about him is this humble, uh, humble man. Um, and and in, his, in, in his book, in his book, uh, uh, former Prime Minister Raila Odinga describes him as a gentle soul. And I think it's quite befitting, because he says, he was tall like I am, so he says, besides uh, uh, he said, besides Fidel's towering presence, meaning his height, he's a gentle soul. And that's what I he, he had most people describe. I've had very brief encounters with him. Not much to speak of uh, besides an hour or two. But anyone who knows him well and described him as a very gentle uh, soul. So I think he'll, he'll tremendously be missed, um, obviously by his family. Uh, tremendously by his family, I have to say. Uh, as a father, and I'm sure many people in this place who are parents, and it's, it's, you don't wish um, to bury your children. It should be the reverse, as you would wish your children bury their parents. So they, I don't think there's anything that compares. I one time had someone say that when someone loses their spouse, you call them a widow or widowed. When someone loses their parents, you call them an orphan. There's actually no word for someone who loses their children. I mean, that's just how tremendously sad it is as a parent. 
to lose a child. Uh, and 41 years is a lot of time to spend with a child. And to lose a 41 year old young man who you've put 41 years of your soul and sweat into them uh, is a tremendous loss. So I don't think any of us could speak to that personal uh, loss unless you've experienced it. So we wish the Odinga family a quick rebound. We wish them uh, patience. We wish God to grant them uh, the strength uh, to weather this storm. And it is a really hard storm, uh, uh, personally. Uh, I am not at this moment quite interested in the political uh, potential. It is really the loss of a son. And that is what I don't want people to lose. Um, to lose uh, uh, his perspective on that someone lost a very dear son who happened to be his son uh, for 41 years of, a of age, right? Both uh, Ida and, and Raila in this case. So as a friend of the family, as a, as a leader in the diaspora, as a friend of, of, of the Odinga family, as on behalf of Kenyans in the diaspora, on behalf of the extended uh, Kenyan family, we wish them our heartfelt uh, condolences and we wish them uh, the best. Again, to Fidel's immediate family, his bereaved wife and his young son, uh, as Pastor said, we wish them strength, uh, we wish them patience, and we pray for them. Um, God has, um, yeah, we say man proposes and God disposes. So God has a plan and um, we uh, as Kenyans we are a very spiritual community whether you're Muslim or Christian we happen to be a very deeply religious country so it's, it's time that um, and even as Muslims we believe that people of the book uh, who are Jews and Christians uh, have the same uh, sense of uh, uh, explanation in what befell, befalls us as being God's hand. That we have to believe. In, in Islam we say, Kun fayakun. God, God says, be and it is. And that's it. There is no question. We don't question his will. We don't question his judgment. We don't say, why did this befell me? Or why did it not befall my neighbor? We believe this is a test. And it's a test of endurance that everyone who's a believer has to, has to go through. So on my own behalf and on behalf of the community here, I want to say our sincere, sincere condolences. And this has been quite heartfelt in the diaspora as well. Thank you. We're typically on Saturday, you know, just quiet moment and texts were coming through. But at the time it seemed more like word is around but it's not confirmed. And we were in disbelief, but then in the morning for sure it was confirmed that it happened. And I'd say as a friend to Fidel, it took me about two days to absorb what was just going on. Um, Fidel and I went to school together in primary. Uh, he was uh, slightly ahead of me. And um, we were very good friends. It's, but I'd say I don't want to focus more on my friendship with him but rather to focus more on his friendship with everybody. That is who Fidel was. So far, everything you've heard about Fidel, in terms of, you know, he had no boundaries. He loved everybody. He was very down to earth. When I tell everybody that I didn't know Fidel was Raila's son for many years, until I came to the US, that is how simple Fidel was. He truly was a very, very simple guy, and um, I think that's what stands out most about him. He wanted to be just an ordinary guy. He never wanted to be associated because he's the son of a prominent person, and he led his life as such. Uh, we lived together in Maryland. We reunited again with him when I moved to Maryland, and he will be missed. He's, he's a, a special person. He's a special person and uh, my heart goes out to his family and to live behind a one year old and to watch where he was when he was serious, when he was a joker, when he now reshaped back again. Um, it, it's a shock. 
it's a shock. I think I'm not sure I've accepted what's going on, but uh, I'd say life is such, death is never easy to accept, and uh, we wish the family peace, and we just hope that you know the legacy will continue. Um, I'll echo what somebody else said, you know, we don't want to speculate what happened or what didn't, but let's just accept that he was a wonderful person, he was very peaceful, and despite what led to his death, um, I think if he was here, he would have just wanted a peaceful gathering. And these are the type of things Fidel would have liked. Speaking as a friend, I'm sure wherever he is watching, he's very proud of us. He liked to joke a lot, so he, w he did not like seeing people mourn. And, and I think that's why I'm trying to be strong in that respect of not really crying, but instead celebrating his life. It's good to, to see people get together like this. And, uh, and basically, this is how we mourn. Yeah, you may have not met Fidel, but uh, he, he, he is somebody, if you hear the eulogies, you get to know that uh, we lost a leader. Sometimes you think that the, it is the Raela, the Odinga family who lost. Maybe you lost more than them because you never know what he would do to Kenya or to you as, a, as an individual. Yeah. Sometimes people say when somebody's child dies and you even don't care about it, you never know if that child, if he was alive, what he would impact you with on the positive side.